Hello. My name is Hans George Campbell and tonight I'm doing an unboxing of these Yahoo 938D hot tweezers. Um, they also go under the name of um, WEP 938D Portable. So you can look up these hot tweezers under either uh, Yeeha, which is Y I H U A. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Yeeha or Yehu uh, 938D or under WEP 938D Portable. So I'm going to be doing a, an unboxing of these tweezers uh, tonight under the camera. And uh, so. Let's get started. Okay, I've been wanting to buy a set of these because I'm going to be recapping one of my Amiga 1200 computers. In fact, it's going to be the Amiga 1200 computer that I'm planning on putting in that nice uh, blue case that I bought, you know. I decided, well, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and recap that motherboard first. And to go ahead and show you guys how to properly recap an Amiga 1200 motherboard because uh, I'm tired of seeing that done wrong so I'm going to show you how to do it the correct way so stay tuned for that exciting video anyway this is a pair of the Yeeha uh, 938D hot tweezers and you get a set of instructions these are in English. Yeah, they appear to be in English. I don't know if you can read that or not or see that or not underneath the camera. But, yeah. Yeah, now what's weird, the a, a lot of the Asian cultures they read backwards. They read from right to left. That's why the book folds funny. Whereas Americans, we read, and, and also most parts of Europe, we read from left to right. So, yeah, if you ever get a manual that reads like this, that's why. Okay, so according to this, the temperature range on these hot tweezers is okay. Uh, 200 degrees to 480 degrees Celsius or 392 degrees to 896 degrees Fahrenheit. Ow, that, that, that's actually quite a bit. That's quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay. It does have a sleep mode where it goes to sleep after 10 minutes of, of non-use you know it'll go to it'll go to sleep after 10 minutes so that's good it saves on tip wear and and uh yeah so that's pretty cool okay so that's the instructions the instructions well that one and this one here wait a moment what is that Well, that's instruction, right? Well, what are these? Instruction manual. Okay. In English. Okay. Important safeguards. Save these instructions. Okay, I think I will. All right. All right, so now let's take a look at what's inside the box, shall we? Um, hmm. 
Well, looks like we're going to just dump this out. Ooh, don't dump it on the floor, Mr. Campbell. That would not be nice to dump it on the floor. Okay, we got a cute little sponge. <clears throat> okay, we got some cardboard. All right. Okay, so it looks like, I'll show this in a little bit. It looks like we have like this nice little, it looks like an all metal holder that you put the thing and it has nice thick like rubber pads on the bottom you know anti-slip rubber pads I think that's that's really nice uh, this appears to be stainless steel and the sponge you just wet it you know and what I would recommend doing as far as the sponge okay let me zoom in a little bit what I would recommend doing with the sponge is okay If you notice on these hot tweezers, let me uh, adjust this. Okay, yeah, these are adjustable. Wow, look how wide they open. They open pre up pretty wide. Wow. I usually like to have them like that so I don't have to open them too much. I don't know, maybe a little bit. Yeah. But what I would do is I would set these about where you need them. And then take an X-Acto knife and, and cut just about a one-inch slit on each side. Like right there on that sponge. And do it when it's dry like this. It'd be easier to do that instead of wet. This way, um, the tip will go into the sponge, both of the tips, and it'll be easier to keep them clean. You know, to clean these tips if you do that. So, yeah, that's what I would do. Is I would cut, take an exacto knife and a straight edge, and just cut, just mark, you know, and just cut a couple little slits in there. Um, not all the way through. I mean, just cut it like about an inch long, like that, so that the sponge stays together. Yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. Cause I'll actually show you how to do that. I'll actually do it on mine. But yeah, that stand I think is pretty nice. And then the iron. Goes in like that. It seems to be pretty stable. So that's nice. All right. So when we come back, we will take a look at the main unit. Excuse me, sir. How do you spell relief? Well, Whenever I suffer from excessive gas in my bowels, I spell relief F-A-R-T. F-A-R-T. Fart spells relief. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> I went ahead and removed the the wire ties off camera because I don't want to waste my viewers' time doing that. Um, the cable seems to be a really nice, flexible cable. It appears to be made out of... Um, I forgot what you call that stuff, but it is heat resistant. It is heat resistant. So you don't have to really worry about burning the cable. And uh, now this side is. I'm not sure about this side. But I know this side is made out of like, I don't know, some kind of a soft rubbery material that's heat resistant. Okay. And this right here, this is the main control unit. Let me uh, zoom out just a little bit. Yeah, this is the main control unit right here. As you can see, it says WEP-938D. Uh, but these are also, it's basically the same thing as the, um, the YIHU, YHU. It's Y-I-H-U-A. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I think most people don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> 938D hot tweezers. All right. Um, this is your main on-off 
switch right up here. Okay, this right here is your Fahrenheit or Celsius switch. I'm going to have it on Fahrenheit because that's what I'm used to using here in the United States. And then this right here is your temperature control. And usually you want to use it about the middle. Usually. Okay, like normal soldering iron tips, hot tweezer iron tips also have a maximum temperature rating and you never want to exceed that rating because the first time you do that you might as well take those tips and throw them in the garbage and install a new pair of tips because you ruined them that's right most soldering iron tips I mean in general they have a maximum rated temperature of 700 degrees Fahrenheit now high temperature tips which are special tips um, they can go up to either 800, uh, 900, or all, or all the way up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It just depends on, you know, the tips. Uh, the ones that I use here in the shop, they're, the high temperature tips are rated at up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, whereas your normal tips, like the ones that come with this unit and a lot of your soldering iron stations, they're rated at up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And the reason why I'm telling you that is you never turn this temperature thing here above 700 degrees. Not with these tips. You want to keep it at 700 degrees or less. Now in general, um, I usually have my soldering iron set between 550 degrees Fahrenheit up to around 625 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually rarely ever have to go above 625. Okay? And this is especially true for surface mount parts, which is what this is designed for. So it's designed for removing small surface mount parts. And it's perfect for removing the electrolytic capacitors, you know, surface mount electrolytic capacitors that are on an Amiga 1200 or an, an Amiga 4000 motherboard. You know, it's perfect for those. And I'm going to show how to use these real soon when I recap my Amiga 1200 computer. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, this is the main control unit. And there is the, the sticker there. I don't know if any of you are interested in reading that information or not, but there it is. I'll show it anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think this, it feels nice. I like the way it looks. It appears to be good quality. We'll turn it on, we'll plug it in and turn it on in a moment. Just to show you what it looks like. Okay. And here is the actual, uh, let me zoom out on this. This is the actual iron itself. Let me get this out of the way. Yeah, this is the actual iron itself. And this here adjusts how wide these are. This adjusts that. You can also have it go in. Like, I'm probably, okay, it'll go all the way in about as small as that. But I'm probably going to have it set for about right there. Because most of the stuff I'm going to be working on, they're about that wide. They're not very wide. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, this does play a little bit. It has a lot of play in it. You can look at it this way. You can see it's got a little a lot of play in it, you know. That actually I don't like. They should have made this a little bit tighter, I think. Um, yeah. And these, okay, you can get replacement tips for these. You can get replacement tips. In fact, I got a set of replacements on order. But yeah, I can't wait to try these out. I think they're going to work great. Yeah, I think they're going to work great. Yeah, they're going to work great, I think. Yep. Okay, so let's turn it on. Um and let's take a look at the the range. Let me go ahead and plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> plug 
plug it in, plug it in. Yeah, I know, I got a marvelous singing voice. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we got that like that, and we're going to turn that bitch on. And, okay, Fahrenheit. Now, that's nice. When you first turn this, it shows you the temperature setting that the dial is at, and then it shows it going up to that temperature. Okay, so right now, at, at the halfway point, that's what I thought. It says 649 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I'm going to lower it to about 625, because that's what I usually like to use it at, especially for surface mount. Okay. Remember, don't ever go above 700 degrees Fahrenheit. First time you do that, you will ruin your tips, and you might as well throw them in the garbage and install new ones. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it's close, you know. Keep in mind that solder, okay, melts at only 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You say, what? Yes, that's true. Uh, general purpose solder, like the Kester solder that I use, and that we use in the electronics industry, it has a melting point of only 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, you're probably asking yourself, well, why do you have to raise the temperature up so high then, you know, if your solder melts at 300 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, that's a good question. It has to do with how much metal the solder is adhering to and how much metal is around that solder connection. And so the extra temperature compensates for that extra um, that extra metal. Okay, So the more metal you have, the higher the temperature. That's the reason why you need high temperature tips when you're dealing with um, large ground planes or voltage planes. You need a much higher temperature. Okay, whereas for your normal uh, solder pads, you know, uh, you can solder those or unsolder on those as little as 500 and what, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, you don't need that much. Um, so I've noticed a lot of you having your iron set way too hot, you know, and it doesn't need to be set that hot. Okay, it does not need to be set that hot. Um, yeah, but I think I think this is nice. Uh, the display reads really well. I don't know how clear it is on the camera, but in person it reads really well. It's a really nice looking display. It really is. The dial works really good, and you can very quickly change it to Celsius. So right now it's what 316 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, yeah. So this thing appears to be working really well. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Let me go ahead and unplug that. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty nice. Um, anyway, that's it for this unboxing. I just thought I'd show you this, uh, this Yeehaw, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> Yeehaw slash WEP um, 938D hot tweezers that I was using uh, when I recap my ME1200 uh, computer. So stay tuned for that exciting video. Anyway. If you have not subscribed to my channel, maybe you should. If you like videos about vintage computers, vintage computer hardware and vintage computer software and their original boxes, you know, if you like repairs and recaps and upgrades and stuff like that, if you like reviews on new hardware as well as older hardware, if you like um, uh, Amiga gameplay capturing and Commodore 64 gameplay capturing and stuff like that, PC game capturing, whatever, 
Um, if you like that kind of content, if you like that kind of stuff, I think you're going to love this channel. I really do. So maybe you should subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Hans George Campbell. And until next time.